Muy bien, ahora vamos a seguir con la presentación de Joao Falcao. Él es analista de seguridad de red TIM con experiencia en ambientes industriales y IoT, quien presentará sobre estandarización de la seguridad de la IoT en el IETF. Joao, te invito por favor a subir al estrado. Hola, buenos días, me llamo João. Eh, voy a presentar sobre uh, ciberseguridad en IoT. Bueno, este soy yo. <ríe> y voy a hablar en portugués. Ok, eh, ¿cuál es el primer punto aquí? I'm going to speak Portuguese. So, uh, it is first important to define what we are speaking about when we speak of IoT. These are devices that, uh, that basic devices that are connected with other devices in the internet. So, the connection of uh, multiple devices uh, leads, uh, causes an additional complexity because we are talking of uh, uh, rare devices or not so common. What are then those things that uh, differentiate an IoT device? What's peculiar about them? There are some very important characteristics. First of all, we have a reduced processing in those devices and a very reduced uh, uh, memory that will limit a lot the uh, scope of the protocols that we can use. It, at uh, times, it uh, has uh, it uh, does not uh, uh, use much uh, power because it's not connected to the grid, and because it's using a battery in a more unstable environment, so the supply of power is lower. We also we have devices that are almost autonomous. They are sent uh, to the local and. Uh, very often it is uh, uh, difficult to have a direct uh, management of uh, the machine. So they have a reduced processing, reduced memory, a limited energy consumption. And the, the way you can access uh, to those devices is very limited. The interfaces are more simple. We also have very significant uh, difficulties for updating. Because as they, these are devices that are not very powerful with a, a low processing capacity there, we have a very important constraint that uh, leads to instability. Very often when we update one of those systems, they end up uh, breaking down or having a problem like that. Very often we are working with devices that uh, have mobiles, so uh, mapping monitoring uh, those machines is much more complex because um, it that mobility of the devices needs to be maintained it must be you need to ensure the traceability of uh, those appliances or equipment even if they move another important thing is integration very often they are built with uh, propriety protocols that are small and that are specific for each vendor. So it, that is also complex. That's another thing that uh, we need to work with. In addition, we work with d various topologies and types of a network, and each of them has specific characteristics. So we already know what the devices that we are going to handle are. Let's talk a bit of the uh, safe systems requirements. So I brought the famous triad that is availability, confidentiality, and integrity. And here I put some notes so that uh, we can discuss them. First of all, when dealing with confidentiality, we can work with encryption with 
an authentication protocol and with anonymization that sometimes is necessary when we treat uh, different uh, amounts of uh, data and sensors. As to integrity, we have uh, two different approaches, one of which is the use of uh, the algorithms for digital signatures and the verification sums. That's even better whenever possible to use the hash algorithms. And when we are working with availability, it's important uh, that uh, for the infrastructure to be uh, attack resistant. So we have to think of uh, the way by which these uh, uh, not very powerful devices can still be resist attacks from uh, machines or equipments that are much more sophisticated than uh, the, the victims. Something that it is very important to remember is the uh, huge uh, progress that uh, we have when we try with deal with microcontrollers. The possibility of inserting and encrypting uh, uh, method in them. Well, that uh, will make it possible to maintain a system with less, pr uh, with a little processing capacity and with little power consumption that has to do complex things with a common device. So one, uh, an IoT device here. Brought I brought a picture. This is a, a little graph of a chip that is used uh, for uh, crypto mining. This is an example of how we can improve uh, the processing power, the specific processing power for a certain application when we have the possibility of altering the hardware. It is very important to charge the uh, microchip uh, um, w when we can tell the microchip vendors to give us the devices with those capabilities. In the case of crypto mining, it is the need for multitasking is even more apparent, doing uh, several things at the same time. You see that each block in the picture, each uh, little block that is responsible for uh, many functions that uh, tree trying to generate a hash and also generating keys. When we have a, an internal uh, uh, hardware uh, software, it is much easier to handle the, in the encryption inside the device. So the first thing that we need to co that I researched when I saw what IETF was doing was uh, I, I, I looked for all the RFCs related with IoT. So here you have them. We have issues. They deal with issues related to protocols of safe security, such as TLS, the transport layer security, also the uh, protocols or communication. Um, and uh, something that I considered important was to see the uh, proportion of the RFCs. Uh, uh, most of them are for information purposes, but the proposal for standards are there uh, based on uh, the RFCs created. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what's being done at present. Here, this is the most recent uh, data of IETF 113 that was held in Vienna. And uh, there, the minutes of the discussions were focused on these six items, the first of which is uh, a challenge that uh, we've experienced for many years and we've had to address at many meetings, and it is how to handle with DNS when we are working with local networks. The IoT discussion, the IoTSF uh, was uh, used uh, to try to create a special case for IoT devices so that they may use a DNS, but uh, it should be capable to differentiate uh, from an internal network, an intranet, and uh, the internet. 
to uh, dodge any attackers connecting uh, with uh, their internal network and connecting with other sites. Something that is also very important has to do with industrial networks, the industrial IoT uh, networks. Um, those networks are steadily growing and not only do they increase in size, but they become increasingly complex. And something that uh, has uh, become essential is the use of virtualization for PLCs in industrial networks. We know that PLCs uh, are uh, RTS machines. So, and we have a number of issues mm, related with the management of virtualization in a system that can, can have no latencies, no delays. The third uh, item that was uh, discussed uh, dealt with how to create future-proof zoning for uh, OT networks, uh, for operation technologies, because we have uh, a network that uh, uh, in hierarchies um, causes some risks among the people that are working with that network. Because if, if an attacker enters the network at a given point, that uh, gives uh, the attacker some privilege. So we need to work and uh, see how we can plan that network and create specific zones for each application so that they can talk to each other, always maintaining the security standards. And the fourth issue of the IETF 113 dealt with uh, the um, communications uh, for the energy grid operations. When we speak of uh, energy with uh, power, we need to uh, adopt uh, uh, quick and coordinated decisions. Very often, those devices are in remote places. They depend on an uh, OT infrastructure, usually not uh, updated um, with all uh, the issues that they may face. This was presented um, at uh, the uh, ETF, and for future discussions, the author will work out those ideas to better specify the new challenges um, and uh, relate them with the existing work in IETF to handle those issues. We also had discussions about the topics related with the implementation of 1.3, DLS, DDLS, for the Internet of Things. Uh, the IoT are a very, uh, TLS, DTLS 1.3 brought uh, cost problems uh, in the devices uh, because they cause problems in uh, the DNS processing. So there we have an open space in, to invite people to imagine what would be the impact for using uh, a modern uh, protocols such as TLS within the IoT infrastructure? And of course, finally, we had uh, the common discussion about uh, the entire IoT OPS operations working group. Now we are going to talk about the drafts <coughs> that are active at present. The first deals with uh, on how to produce um, uh, the relations between security between the devices connected to the network and how to generate their identity. What are the attributes needed to identify only one IoT device that uh, needs confirmation of uh, their singularity? Another topic that also came about with uh, the discussions has to do with the need of creating new authentication methods for the Internet of Things. 
when we work with IoT devices, they require they require a special treatment because usually when we handle other equipment, we have multiple interfaces and uh, across the verification in a security system is more viable. But if I have an IP camera, which are the IPs that do not depend on the network so that we can validate secure access? These are very small. And even a suggestion is using LEDs for the purpose of doing cross verification using an algorithm that manages to change those switches for a second channel and removes the risk of just using one means for the purpose of secure replacement of that system. So in that case, we'll have two drafts that we that are the following. One of these deals with a binary object representation for per, for its updates. So what would that file structure be for the updates? And we see here an opportunity. So. Once the files have been standardized, we can start working with update management system on a multi-platform and multi-vendor modality. The same author submitted a second draft. So once we have these files, once we have those specific files, how do we standardize this update and communication? This is regarding the devices connected to the red network. The second last draft has to do with TLS, DTLS 1.3. This is a description of how we have to work with the TLS protocol so that there is an effective implementation of the IoT devices. And finally, there is another draft that was created by Savio. He made a presentation last Tuesday, specifically referring to this point. He explained what he worked on and what the purpose is of work working with an Inchu. And I will make a brief review. Inchu is a network analyzer that has the purpose of detecting malicious behavior within IoT networks, networks that are heterogeneous, that have very simple devices. So how can you standardize the data? for the purpose of that network auditing. F from the active drafts, I selected these here. And now I'd like to speak about an organization I participate in, which is the IoT Cybersecurity for Latin America and the Caribbean. We are a multidisciplinary Latin, Amer Latin American and Caribbean group that has the aim of promoting, disseminating, and implementing IoT technology from the standards through to the best international practices. Oscar is part of the same group, and you're all invited to participate and to speak with us, because it is very important that we should really, that we are really at the forefront. We have to guarantee the security of, of all these devices that are being implemented at an amazing speed and with only limited or just no security protocol in addition to that. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Ron. We have a first question in the room. I'm Julio. I'm also from Brazil. Great presentation. I recall that in 2016, the DDoS attacks in the Olympics used video cameras. Last week, I attended an event where people said that they're now using the refrigerators. So the most intelligent thing at home is a cat. I don't have any smart lamps. That issue of the standardization is great. How do you see the government organizations interacting with IETF? So in terms of security, that is a strategic issue. And we're speaking about cybersecurity. Well, this is a most interesting topic. And in the Internet Governance Forum, we have spoken about security installations. We are doing a survey at this moment regarding what is the relationship between the governments and the best practices that those governments are considering adopting for IoT devices. It is always important that these initiatives stem from ourselves. Well, I believe, or rather, we always have regulations that go behind the technological development. So a long, it takes a long time, particularly for IoT devices. And this is quite difficult because even imports, at least in Brazil, is not very regulated. So how can we speak about standards? Or how can we say that the Brazilian government is guaranteeing standards when a large number of these devices just enter the country without any control whatsoever. Next. Good morning. I will try to speak in Spanish. Is that okay with you? My question is, when you implement a virtual TLC, do you use the virtualization structure of that organization? Or do you set up a different infrastructure? Well, this is most interesting. How can we guarantee this PVCs? Nowadays, computers are far more powerful compared to the initial one. So the objective was really to implement operations in a very fast way, something that a common computer wasn't able to do so. These are general use computers. Now the virtualization layers are still being discussed at the IETF. For example, how to generate that need. <laughs> 